If you want to rule the jungle like a lion, if you want to be Superman, you've got to get the right amount of sleep. Hello again, everybody. I'm Eli's dad with Project Eli, where we educate, lead, and inspire. And today, we're going to focus on one of the key elements to becoming a super person in terms of success, and that is being productive, and that means getting enough sleep. So join Eli and me today as we talk about becoming that lion out there in the jungle. Superman tells us from uh, the movie What's So Funny About Truth, Justice, and the American Way, and I quote, dreams save us. Dreams lift us up and transform us, and on my soul, I swear, until my dream of a world where dignity, honor, and justice become the reality, we all share, I'll never stop fighting, ever. That's Superman. All right, so we're going to get some help today from a, a number of different people. Uh, Eric Barker, for one, uh, author of Barking Up the Wrong Tree. Richard Wiseman, author of, author of Night School. And from George Carlin. So pay attention, we're going to talk about sleep, things you probably didn't know, things are going to help you sleep better, things are going to help you be more productive. Why is it critical to get great sleep? Well, among regenerating, for obvi the obvious things, regenerating your mind, regenerating your body, is when you're asleep, that's when you open up the subconscious mind, open up the transmission channel between yourself and the infinite mind, so that you can receive transmissions to help you move forward. So let's start talking about sleep. Now people say, I'm going to go to sleep right now, as if it were nothing. But it's really a bizarre activity when you stop and think about it. Because for the next several hours while the sun is gone, I'm going to become more unconscious, temporarily losing command over everything I know and understand. And when the sun returns, then I'm going to resume my life. George Carlin tells us, if you didn't know what sleep was, and you'd only seen it in a science fiction movie, you would think it was weird and tell all your friends about the movie you'd seen. They had these people, you know, and they would walk around all day and be okay. And then, once a day, usually after dark, they would lie down on these special platforms and become unconscious. They would stop functioning almost completely, except deep in their minds, they would have adventures and experiences that were completely impossible in real life. And as they lay there, completely vulnerable to their enemies, their only movements were to occasionally shift from one position to another. Or if one of the mind adventures got too real, they would sit up and scream and be glad they weren't unconscious anymore. Then they drink a cup of coffee. So the next time you see someone sleeping, Make believe you're in a science fiction movie and whisper, the creature is regenerating itself. And that's from George Carlin. Now the National Sleep Foundation tells us one of the vital roles of sleep is to help us solidify and consolidate memories. As we go about our day, our brains take in an incredible amount of information. Rather than being directly logged and recorded, however, these facts and experiences first need to be processed and stored and many of these steps happen while we sleep. Overnight, bits and pieces of information are transferred from more tentative, short-term memory to stronger, long-term memory, a process called consolidation. Researchers have also shown that after people sleep, they tend to retain information and perform better on memory tasks. Our bodies all require long periods of sleep in order to restore and rejuvenate, to grow muscle, to repair tissue, and to synthesize horm hormones. How much sleep do we really need? Healthy sleep is critical for everyone, since we all need to retain information and learn skills to thrive in life. But this is likely part of the reason children who acquire language, social, and motor skills at a breathtaking pace throughout their development need more sleep than adults. While adults need seven to nine hours of sleep a night, one-year-olds need roughly 11 to 14 hours, 
school age kids between 9 and 11, teenagers between 8 and 10. Now during these critical periods of growth and learning, younger people need a heavy dose of slumber for optimal development and alertness. Unfortunately, a person can't just accumulate sleep deprivation, depri easy for me to say, and then log many hours of sleep to make up for it. Although paying back sleep debt is always a good idea if you're sleep deprived. The best sleep habits are consistent, healthy routines that allow all of us, regardless of our age, to meet our sleep needs every night and keep on top of life's challenges every day. Once again, Richard Wiseman from Night School tells us the number one mistake that screwing up your sleep is, well, your smartphone is the devil. Your iPad is Lucifer. Your TV cackles with glee when you have insomnia. You see, they all give off blue light that your brain mistakes for sunshine. And that tells your brain it's time to wake up, not time to go to bed. So stay away from these devices during the hour before you try and nod off. Now there is one exception and that is if you have jet lag. Then you can use the blue light to help your body adjust to your new time zone. Now a good nightly routine is key to successful sleeping. It's just like a good morning routine. It's inc is, it, just like a good morning routine is incredibly powerful one before bed can be a game changer as well. Here's the first step. No booze. It seems like it helps, but it's actually a big no-no. Drinking alcohol an hour or two before you go to bed is not a good idea. Yeah, you'll fall asleep quicker, but it keeps you out of deep sleep. And in the morning, you wake up feeling pretty terrible. Now, another thing that helps you is thinking positive thoughts before you go to bed is helpful and can promote good dreams, especially when you're communicating with the universe. One of the biggest things that causes insomnia is that anxiety about getting to bed. Now, when these awful thoughts start running through your head at night, try this little game. Richard suggests, just think about a country or a vegetable or a fruit for each letter of the alphabet. You just slowly work your way through and that can take your mind off negative thoughts. Now is worrying keeping you awake? Here's a solution. Keep a pad and pen by the bed, write down your thoughts, and then dismiss them. Still can't sleep? Get up. Don't accidentally make a Pavlov style association between your bed and not sleeping. Richard tells us that the issue is often staying in bed or awake for 10 minutes or more and people start to associate bed with being awake instead of being asleep. Just get up, do something which is not stimulating, and then go back to bed. So winding down, so your winding down ritual is very important. What about naps? Yeah, I know they're amazing. How can you and I make them more amazing? So how do you nap like a pro? Well, rule number one is don't go down for more than an hour. 20 to 30 minutes is great, but even five minutes can give you a big boost. Anything over an hour is probably not a great idea, but 20 to 30 minutes of napping is incredibly good for creativity and focus. Naps can make a massive, massive difference even five minutes increases reaction time and focus. That was once again Richard Wiseman. Now NASA, NASA found pilots that found that pilots who take a 25 minute nap are 35 percent more alert and twice as focused. Are you worried that you won't wake up in time for something important? Here's a solution. Drink a cup of coffee immediately before you lie down. The caffeine doesn't kick in until about 25 minutes later, so you'll get the perfect amount of nap time. 
all this is great for getting some sleep, but what about when you can't stay asleep? You know what? That's not a problem. Now, waking up in the middle of the night is natural. Research shows we evolved to sleep in the past in two distinct phases. So don't worry. Do something for a little while and then head back to bed for round two. Richard tells us, we've evolved to have what's called segregated sleeping. If you wake up in the middle of the night, that's perfectly natural. Before electric lights, people would talk about first sleep and second sleep. In between, they'd go and visit their friends or play games. So if you do wake up in the middle of the night, that's fine. Get out of bed for 20 minutes and do something. Don't lay there feeling anxious. Now, is this fragmented sleeping bad? Well, actually science says far from it. Blood work showed that the time between the two sleeping periods was incredibly relaxing and blissful. The results showed that the hour humans spent awake in the middle of the night was probably the most relaxing block of time in their lives. Chemically, the body was in a state equivalent to what you might feel like after spending a day at the, sta at the spa. But here's a problem everyone's had. You ever sleep for eight hours or more and then you still feel groggy and awful? Well, here's why. If you want to get better sleep, remember the 90-minute rule. Your body goes through sleep cycles of 90 minutes. Wake up in the middle of one and you'll feel lousy no matter how long you've been in bed. So plan your sleep schedule in increments of an hour and a half. Sleep scientists all use the 90-minute rule. It basically is a sleep cycle which is moving from light sleep to deep sleep to dreaming and then repeating that again and again. That cycle is roughly 90 minutes. You're best off waking up at the end of a cycle. Plan your sleep in 90-minute blocks to tell you the best time to be falling asleep. Then you go to bed about 10, 12 minutes before that because typically that's how long it should be taking you to fall asleep. So let's sum up. Avoid smartphones and devices at night, but they're great when you're dealing with jet lag. Number two, a good nightly routine is key. No alcohol before bed, think positive thoughts, and play the alphabet game if you're having difficulties. Number three, naps are awesome. Just keep them under 30 minutes. Drink a cup of coffee before you lay down because once again, the caffeine doesn't take effect for about 25 minutes. Number four, sleeping in two chunks is natural. Get up and do something for a little while and then go back to bed. Remember the 90 minute rule. Think about that when you need to be up and count back in increments of 90 minutes so that you can wake up sharp. Here's our thought for the day. And this is from the 6th century BC Heraclitus. And I quote, even a soul submerged in sleep is hard at work and helps make something of the world. And because we will never end a meeting on a philosophical note, let's get out there and charge! I'm Eli's dad.